So far we looked at smoothing models where there's no pattern in the data. We expect sales to be level with just random variability due to factors we don't understand. The first pattern we looked at was trend. We looked at linear trend. We used regression, which fits a straight line. We also used Holtz model, which is an adaptive version of forecasting a trend, which can adapt to shifts over time in the trend. Then we looked at the seasonal model, where our sales are level, except that they're adjusted by the seasons. We have a product like suntan lotion or skis that are affected by the weather. Now we're going to look at seasonal trend models with seasonal trend data. So as example we have here, we have increasing sales, so there's certainly a trend in the data. We also have seasonal variation, so we have variation over the 12 month cycle of seasons. And we're going to look at two ways of forecasting this, and they're really combinations of models that we've already looked at. The first approach is decomposition forecasting. Seasonal factors are added to our regression model so that we can forecast a trend into the future. Then we can adjust that trend line up or down based on the season. There are a couple of different ways that you can implement decomposition forecasting. The method we're going to use has four steps. We're going to use averaging to get seasonal factors. We're going to do exactly what we did with the seasonal model. Even though we have trends in our data, we're going to use that averaging, get seasonal factors. Then we're going to use those seasonal factors to deseasonalize the sales data. We're going to take out the impact of the seasons. Then we can use regression on this deseasonalized data to get the trend line. We're going to get the M, X plus B with regression. Then we can forecast using the trend estimate using the Y equals M, X plus B. And then we're going to multiply by the seasonal factor for the particular period. So we're just going to use regression and multiply by the seasonal factors to adjust that up or down to give us a forecast that has both trend and seasonal components. Here we have some data. We need two years worth of data to initialize this model. When we look at the data, we need to think about what quarter or what period we're talking about periods 1 through 8, that's going to be used in regression. We also have to think about the season that we're talking about, spring, summer, fall, or winter, so that we can look at adjusting the data up or down when we forecast based on the season. So when we look at this eight periods of sales data, sometimes we're thinking about what period it is from 1 through 8, how much farther in the future it is, to understand the trend in our data. And then we also have to think about the season because we can see that this is a summer product. Summer is much higher than sales in the winter. To initialize the model, first we're going to calculate the seasonal factors. We're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to get quarterly averages. So 109 is the average of 90 and 128. 184 is the average of 157 and 211 and so on. We're going to get four quarterly averages. Again, the overall average is the average of the entire set of data, or as we saw previously, I can just average the quarterly averages. I get the same thing. I get the overall average sales for this two-year period. The seasonal factors then are 109 divided by 135.9 That'll give me 0 0.8. I put this down in year 2017 and 2018. The next seasonal factor, 184 divided by 135.9 to get 1.4. I put it here and here. It's what we think is going to happen to sales in summer. They're going to be 40% above an average quarterly sales level. We write it in both places because then we're going to deseasonalize the sales data. So to get the seasonal factor, we're going to take the sales, we're going to divide it by the seasonal factor, and get our deseasonalized sales. 157 is going to be divided by 1.4 to give us 112, and so on. One thing we can notice with the deseasonalized sales data is for a particular year, the values are fairly consistent. We're in the 112, 111, 112, the 116 range. 
for the second year, 148 to 160. So we see within a year we have an average sort of value. Graphically, it's easier to see this stair-step pattern. If we don't see the stair-step pattern, then we likely have data where the decomposition forecasting model is not going to work well. Next, we want to use regression to find the slope and the intercept for this data. It's a little harder to visualize what a good regression line would look like. A little bit more challenging to see what an estimate of the slope and intercept is. Again, we want to estimate those. So once we do the math, we can look at the answer and say, does that make sense? So just drawing this line in, we're probably somewhere in the 90, 100, 110 region for the B value. So B's may be around 100. A good way to get an estimate of the slope is to realize that in this first year, we're around 120. In the second year, we're around 160. So 160 minus 120 divided by 4 because there's four quarters separating this value and this value, this value and that value. So that's going to be 40 over 4, which is equal to 10. So our slope is approximately equal to 10. Just like with the regression model, we have the eight data values. We get the averages for the x, the period, and the y, the deseasonalized sales values. And we want the sum of the x squared and the sum of the xy. With this, we can calculate the slope. Again, we have n equals 8 here because we have 8 data values to initialize the model. This gives us a slope of 7.7, .7, which is fairly close to the 10 that we estimated. We should feel pretty comfortable about that. When we plug in the slope into the formula for the intercept, we get 101.6, which is where we thought it would be. So it looks like it's doing a good job. It looks like we didn't make any calculation errors. Now with the seasonal factors and our regression model, we can forecast. We can forecast for the eight periods of data we have to see how well the model fits. And it ought to fit pretty well because we designed this model. We fit these parameters to this data. The forecast is two components. First, we're just using regression, mx plus b, m times the period x plus b. We do that, and then this entire quantity is multiplied by the seasonal factor. So we adjust up or down by the seasons. Summer is a big season, so we're going to adjust up. So we just use the regression equation and then multiply that resulting trend line or trend value by the appropriate seasonal factor to adjust up or down to take into account the impact of seasons on our sales. Now, in periods 9 through 12, we're doing the actual forecast. We don't have any data. This is our future prediction. If we look at this graphically, the first eight data values are used to initialize the model. And we look at the fit. We expect it to be good. In fact, it should be quite good in the initialization period if we have any hope for making accurate forecast, because we're telling the model, we're using the model and saying, fit this data as best as possible. Come up with four seasonal factors and two parameters for the regression line using six different parameters fit eight data points. That's not a hard task if we have a good model. If it doesn't fit in the initialization period, then we're not really going to have any chance of a good forecast. We don't have any extra data in this example, so there's no ex post forecast to compare against. So all we really have is an initialized model that we can forecast in the future and compare. We won't look at the Excel implementation of this because there is a computer exercise. There's an Excel assignment for this course where you build a decomposition forecast.